Okay, boys. Cheers for joining us. Late night. What is it? Tuesday? We're in New York City. US Open. Just had a little campaign. Yeah. Still got some dubs to go. Um, so, for anyone watching, I... Uh, I planned on, I, I hadn't even planned really on actually doing with this with either of you guys. And then uh, as a, as week went on last week, I was kind of, I was waiting for it till I was at like another challenger or something to do it with another player. Because a lot of the guys I've been doing it with have been my my age or, or older player, challenger players. And um, and then I was like, you know what, it would actually, as I got to know you guys better, I was like, you know what, it would actually be funny as to do it with, <laughs> with you two. But I was going to do you, uh, um, you two and Pavle all separately. But uh, yeah, so, and then because you have to leave tomorrow and I already lined you up, I thought, yeah. stuff it, we'll go impromptu and see if we can, so as I said earlier, written out questions individually prior to it, but we're going to try and, I'm going to try and just um, impromptu make it work with two of you. So, seeing as though we are, got to know each other because we play tennis and we're here for tennis. I'm going to ask the Jonesy singers that you hold the mic. You can take it first. Uh, maybe not the easiest question, but why do you play tennis? Um, it's actually tough. Um, I don't know. Like, I feel like it's changed like a lot. Like obviously, I started because my parents just put me in it, and I kind of I didn't really like it at first. But like as I got better, I was like, it's actually pretty cool. And then I don't know, just like growing up and stuff, like watching all the the cool tournaments and stuff, and just I don't know, getting to play them. So, it's pretty cool. Like I think it's, I think it's good. Like I enjoy, I definitely enjoy winning, yep. and like meeting new people, traveling. It's really cool. Like, I can't don't say I be enjoy. careful. Don't say you play tennis because you enjoy because <laughs> you enjoy winning. Because then you then you, each week unless you win the tourney, you could be having a tough time. Yeah, mm. even just like small wins, I guess. Like even just yeah. like beating good players and stuff. Like, I enjoy that. Um, just hitting hitting the ball is pretty fun. Like mucking around. Like I know you get to go on, go away with friends and stuff. It's good. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You, Charlie, anything to add? I mean, to be honest, the reason I play tennis is for the, I don't know, I just, it's my one passion in life and I dream of, well, coming here as a pro one day and winning all these tournaments as a as a professional and that's sort of my one and only goal in, in, in sort of an aspiration in my life. I don't really, I'm not that invested or not that... I just hold the mic a bit closer, brother. Not that concerned yeah. about anything else, really. And I don't know, tennis is just everything for me and I just really want to be successful and play all these big events when I'm older as a professional. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, and uh, what, like, what, uh, you, Charlie, what, what got you into tennis first? Why tennis? Like, how did that come about out of everything? Um, well, my dad, like Aiden, my parents got me into it when I was pretty young. But then the sort of the... When I really started taking it seriously was when I was six or seven, I went to the AO for the first time and that was watching all the pros then. That's when I was like, okay, this is what I want to do. And after that, I started pursuing it on a more on a more serious basis. Yep, epic. And you, Jansi, what got you into tennis? Oh, just like this local, this older guy, like local, um, local kind of at these two little courts and I used to like play cricket when I was younger, so... I used to go up and like smack cricket balls around and then the guy was like, yeah. oh, you want to come over and hit? And I don't know, I remember I didn't like it at first and I remember I just, I told my parents I did. I was like, yeah, I like it just because I don't know why not. And I was like six, seven, eight. Um, yeah. And then I just kept going and I eventually started, I actually enjoyed it. Yeah. Yeah. Did you, and you mentioned you were hitting balls around the cricket bat. Did you play any other like sports as a kid? Did you go to lessons or to have any i did like a lot of different sports when i was younger like a, I used to do swimming and stuff like i used to do um like a little bit of sparring and fighting when i was younger um, True. what kind of fighting uh it's like taekwondo i was like yeah got to a black belt and stuff so like that i just used to like do a lot of different stuff afl yeah. like i used to play afl for with my mates at school um yeah nice yeah and you charlie you play any sports when you're younger i mean I love sport and I love all sports and I follow a lot of other sports, but playing wise, no, it's always just been tennis for me. Yeah, yeah. So you're a big NRL fan. You never played. You play footy at school or anything? Or always. Um, parents wouldn't let me, and I just didn't, wasn't yeah. really interested in playing it. I've just been a fan, and yeah, I love watching it. Yeah, yeah. That's the thing about tennis. Hey, in a way, I remember like always, um, like a lot of my mate, like Ollie Anderson, for instance, and he wasn't ever allowed to go to the skate park when he's younger, and I and and uh, and. Um, there's, 
I had heaps of friends that that weren't allowed because to do other things, heaps of other normal things, because you, you're trying to not actually screw yourself over for tennis. That's why I've never been in snow. I've always avoided skiing or snowboarding. So I've always like, what's the risk, you know? If I could call, come off and hurt my wrist or something, tennis done. Same with surfing and kite surfing for me. I feel like I always uh, I'm a little bit hesitant to go to, to be too ambitious because I'm just uh, I'm like, oh, if I hurt it myself badly, there's you know six months of massive setback like. So definitely some sacrifices there, right? Eh? Yeah. Um, okay. Um, what is uh, okay? So you both mentioned when I asked you about why do you play tennis, and like winning, winning, and um, you mentioned playing, you know, tournaments like this at US Open, big events, and obviously that's what you're aspiring to do as well, Jonesy. What uh, define? You know, as tennis players, we always talk about making it. You know what I mean? Oh, I can't wait to make it, or if I when I make it, and whatever. Define uh, what is what is making it for you? I mean, to be honest, there's a, this is a big argument in tennis. A lot of people disagree on this, and as a some people say, just for some people, having one ATP point is making it. If you're for, Lawrence Patel, <laughs> vamos, dug another <laughs> point out, Rafa. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> um, for other people, top hundreds considered making it, but. And for some people, it's even just making a living from the sport, which is basically top hundred. And but being able to support a family and support a a happy a happy life, that's making it. But I, for me personally, I, I feel like making it would. I really want to make the top ten in the world at least, and get a Davis Cup number, or and um, yeah, and play all the Grand Slams. And that's that's what I want to consider making it. Go deep in a Grand Slam, even win one. I mean, I'd be stoked if I won one, but. That's obviously my dream, but like, in terms of making it, I reckon for me, top, I'll be really happy if I make top ten in the world. Yeah. Oh, I know. <laughs> me and Camu always argue about this because I don't know me and Pav we wind him up a bit about like what we define as making it. Yeah. And he gets pretty uh, pretty amped up about it. <laughs> um, I don't know. For me, like, I feel like making it and like what I want to do in tennis are different. Like, I don't ah, uh, like. I always say that making you have to win, like, like to him, I'll tell him it's like 10 grand slams and he gets, like, so annoyed. But I feel like for me, like, what well, for me, like, making it would be top, I, 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 like, I'd probably say top 20 or, like, that would be making it. But, like, obviously for me, I want to win a grand slam. Like, that, one day, like, that's my goal. Like, yeah, definitely, like, that's what I would be. I don't know, like, I might never do it. I might never even get close to it. But, like, that's kind of what I want to do and that's what I know would, like, satisfy me as a career, like, I feel, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah, dream big, boys. Yeah. Dream bigs. I mean, I used to be, I used to disagree and think that, you know, being 70 in the world is a career high, is a great career, as I used to say a lot. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, to be honest, there's, yeah, there is a difference between making it and, my my dreams and aspirations in the sport because making it's probably just yeah making a living and playing the big events but in terms of dreams and aspirations it's much further than that and yeah I want to do a lot more than just 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 play these slams and make up the numbers one day absolutely man absolutely you get with any dream you got to like you got to manifest it by believing it and by aiming high for sure and um then you you know you've realigned your goals along along the way and everything but yeah cool sounds good and you get, I hope you're going to both make it, and I believe on believe in you both. Um, uh, it's inter- yeah, it's interesting. Uh, I was joking the other day, saying to one of my friends, um, uh, uh, I was joking around, saying, "Well, uh, he was saying, I hope you can, I hope you can make it in doubles." And I was like, "Well, man, I re- actually already made it because, like, each day I get up stoked with what I'm doing with my life. So, like, for me, that's kind of making it. And I, obviously." Uh, uh, it, I just it's interesting because uh, you would you would automatically go towards like a, a result goal setting when you think about making it, but often I feel like some people are always chasing that their whole life to make what well, and obviously making a living and supporting a family and living a, a good life is is the end goal and not that not saying you shouldn't aim as high as possible you should aim to win grand slams you should aim to be the world number one you should believe in yourself, but. Uh, yeah, um, just to be, uh, I just look at Dominic Team as an example. He won a Grand Slam, and um, and then he, uh, yeah, he, he's almost can lose drive then, because you're feeling like once you do that and achieve that, you're gonna be the happiest guy ever. But then you still gotta wake up the next day and do something, you know. But big on boys, you can make it. You can both make it. Let's go. Um, 
Uh, who was your biggest um, tennis idol or influence as a kid each year? Um, well, in my room at home, I've actually got probably a poster of 30 players that I, you know, I see. That it, mate. If not more. <laughs> no, I'm not sure, to be completely <laughs> no. honest. But, I mean, being from Canberra, Kiggs has always been one for me. I mean, he's helped me a lot along the way, and I know him pretty well. Hit with him countless times. But, and yeah, I mean, when I was younger, it was Rafa, Djokovic, Federer, and all the, all, all the cliche answers. But as I've gotten older and know some of the pros a bit better and yeah got to know them i'd say a lot of the aussie boys i've you know i idolize demon are a bit and really want to get to his level and if not further and i mean leighton hewitt's helped me a lot and yeah i mean he, he would be one for sure as well yeah um for me like i don't know when i was younger like i'd say like hold, hold a bit oh, closer, really. sorry. i'd say definitely federer i always liked watching federer play i used to Watch him a lot. Probably, I didn't really like watching any other matches unless it was like a Grand Slam final. So definitely Federer. Um, I used to actually like my coach um, when I was younger. He used to tell me about Berner Tomic. Um, how he used to like fade forehands and stuff. Yeah, a bit of a game style similarity. Yeah, there, and for sure. like I don't know. I remember in training, I used to just like like I used to <laughs> muck around a lot with like different stuff. And I remember I used to like remember one time I was just like trying to hit like off forehand like the the atomic drop shot thing that he does. Yeah. Like, Have you hit any any in matches with oh, Bernie? I did, but I had a couple of coaches cancel them out once uh, yeah. a little little while ago. <laughs> I think they got a bit, um, yeah, frustrated with it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. No, I knew your favourite player was going to be somebody of the Eastern group. Yeah, it, <laughs> it had to be. Like, It's yeah. cool because he used to just like, like out of nowhere just like fade it yeah. and stuff. And Yeah, it was cool. Yeah, he's an epic player. Whenever I watch young guys, I always think, oh, who's like a pro player to match them up with? Who? Uh, and I remember saying it to you last week. I was like, who do you play like? Yeah. And yeah, it's it's interesting. Because I feel like it's cool to have somebody that you idolise and, you, you, and your game style can revolve around them, yeah. you know, in a sense. Yeah. You know, somebody to learn from that's got similar attributes. But, um, uh, okay. Um, this one I wrote for you, Charlie, because I was going to do with this one I'm on. Um, uh, you seem to um, you seem to have a uniquely consistent, hardworking mentality, and you have a pretty you're pretty intense on court. And this isn't to say that you um, don't have that, Jonesy. It's just that everybody's just individual, and everybody has their individual strengths, you know. And uh, um, yeah, and everybody has yeah plays tennis in their own way, and ma- matches also matches up with their personality and things like that. But what what uh, um, how did uh, how does that motivation come about for you to be sort of like the I know the last ten days we spent a lot of time together and I've been impressed with how motivated you are on the tennis side of things and sw- and professional and switched on. How does how uh, where does that stem from for you? I mean, to be honest, it probably comes from the the feeling that you know tennis is the only thing I sort of want in my life and in the way that I just want to become pro and win these slams and yeah. So it probably it's probably stems from that, but yeah, I just want to try and. Yeah, I don't know. Just do the best I can every day, and I know that I'm probably not the most naturally gifted tennis player of all time. So I need to uh, make up for that in terms of my hard work. And I know that if you put in a hundred percent every day, and and you know, give it everything, and you're gonna lose. But at least when you do that, you can come off the court, and it's gonna hurt. Every loss hurts, but at least you can come off and say, well, you know, I did everything I could. I played a hundred percent. The guy must have been too good today. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Um, Jonesy, uh, what has it been like for you having a younger sister that play that is really good at tennis and pursuing it? And um, has that been? Uh, um, has is it is it healthy competitive motivation? Do you ever feel jealousy or you're just proud or what's that like? Um, it's 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 weird. Like I don't know. I remember when we were younger. Um, I, only until like. I'd say around a year ago, like, um, I would definitely say that, um, I'd say that I was doing better that like Emerson wasn't, um, she wasn't really established. She was still pretty, pretty young, wasn't playing many tournaments, but then I remember like, I don't know, she just like got really good, really fast. And I was like, okay. Um, but yeah, like she's, she's doing well. Like it's, it, it's weird. Like it's pretty good. Like traveling at tournaments and having her there. I mean, 
it, it's good because like when I was away the first year, like I didn't really get to see her much. Like when I was traveling overseas, because she was just playing stuff in Australia. But like now she's at most of the tournaments and stuff, and she's doing good. Like it, it's it's good to like see. It doesn't really um doesn't really like make me too jealous. Like not like jealous. Like what's the word? Like it doesn't really. Like, well, jealousy is so natural as well, man. And yeah, it's, like, like, it's, obviously it's hard to explain. Like, I don't want her. Um, you don't want her to fail, but you want. No, her I wanted. I wanted to do well. Like, yeah. Like, I know that. Like, I'm on my own journey and stuff. Like, she she plays well. She's doing good. Like, she's making third rounds and slams and stuff. And like, she's she's getting lots of opportunities and stuff. Like, obviously, I would love to get those in the men's, but like, it's different different sport and there's different. Everyone's on their different journey, right? So like, it's good. It's good. Like good i get a free nike bucket hat out of it which is good so <laughs> um yeah it's good yeah epic yeah Should also like these tournaments? yeah <laughs> okay so, sometimes it can be a little bit like there are, there are some yeah some but things. it's also the factor of uh the opportunity she's going to get now um there's just a lot of good uh australian players right now and, and, and it's a pretty solid bunch coming up coming up so it just depends on the age group you get sometimes you know if there was less uh yeah. You know, if you didn't have a, a McCabe and a Phil and a Dana and, and Tristan and all that, there's yeah, more opportunities come for the next yeah. tier. But uh, yeah, they, they'll come yeah. your way, mate. Just exactly. Keep using it as fuel, huh? And it's it's yeah. good. You've got a sibling that is in, into the same thing, you know. I feel like it's pretty good having like strong age groups too. Like me and Charlie and Pav, we've got a pretty strong age group. We're all the same. And, like when you're kind of growing up, like going through, you kind of like push each other to get better. Like I can think of a couple of age groups that are not like strongest and like there's no one no one really good in them like yeah. you know what i mean like kind of need some good players to, like kind of motivate you to go better bring yep. you up so do you reckon it's helped you boys having it you two in pub lay to push each other or what do you do what do you think it would be like if it was just one of you you know in that age group i mean i'm not really sure if it was just one of us but to be completely honest people always ask like oh hayden's doing the best or pavle's doing the best now because he's in the third round and all oh, he must be the number one in the age group but I mean, f through the last eight years, we've all been at the top of the top of the age group, and there's been swings and roundabouts. One of us has had better results, and then the other ones had a better result. So, and that's just how it is. And I wouldn't say one's like way better than the others. And it's just we're all trying to help each other get better, and we're all trying to get to the same same place really. And it's great that, well, yes, since for the back end, of, well, for most of this year, actually, me, Pav, and Jones have been playing the same schedule basically and been playing the same tournaments and yeah i mean we've even played each other a few times and that gets pretty competitive but yeah do you ever have awkward vibes after the matches with you guys or does it simmer out pretty quickly or no no it's usually pretty good we just because yeah. from what i've seen you guys all get along super well but obviously you're going to have moments uh and you're probably gonna have many more yeah. moments where you have to play each other in intense matches you know yeah i mean that's just how it is and we, when there's a chair umpire and stuff, I find if you don't really bother about the other person down the other end and you just play tennis and if they're too good, you shake hands and say, too good, mate, and yeah, move on. It's, yeah. it's kind of, like, tough, though, like, playing some friends. Like when, I find it easier to play Charlie than I do, like, Pav, because I don't know me and Pav are pretty... We don't really... We're not too serious together when we're hanging out. Like, so when we go on court, it's kind of, like, we've got to be serious. And then it's weird, like, it's weird to see yeah. him that focus and I'm that focused for, like solid period of time and then we kind of like shake hands and yeah it's 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 weird yeah. it is it's funny eh? it's a really weird, weird thing when you get when you're with a mate that you're constantly talking shit with and then you get out there and you're absolutely battling right? yeah i mean like an example is before the other week i was playing pub in the final of sydney and we're sitting next to each other in the gym like five minutes before going on court and he's sending me instagram memes and instagram videos and we're laughing together two minutes before going to play well, the biggest final that me and him had played so far this year. <laughs> yeah, that's and good. Like, and then also playing Jones in like a doubles final the week before and like hitting let tape aces and looking look at a staring him down and ripping a big mon in his face. And <laughs> <laughs> is, he ta is he taking the piss and with that or is or serious? Oh no, well, no, like we just we just do it to have for a laugh and to piss each other off. We want to win, yeah. obviously, but yeah, it's just a different type of. I guess in doubles as well, but it was just different sort of atmosphere and feel to it. Yeah. Yeah. I've had that with plenty of friends where we'll just, it's blood, sweat and tears on court. And they're also, it's an awesome thing if you can leave it all out there and compete hard, rip come ons, whatever, and then come off the court. Maybe it'll take a little buffer zone of half an hour, but you'll, uh, you'll be sweet afterwards, you know? Yeah.
Um, boys, uh, um, which coaches pop into mind? Um, which coaches or coach pops into mind um, when you uh, that uh, that's had a positive effect on your tennis? Like, if there's somebody in particular, it's just one, maybe one coach that pops into into your mind that's have a had a really positive effect on your tennis as you've gone up. And um, furthermore, what made you feel that way? <laughs> I think me and Jonesy could tell some, some funny stories of, to this question, and, but I'll, I'll keep it serious. And I mean, my dad's probably from the youngest age been the biggest influence on my tennis. He's been well, coaching me and overseeing it for, for forever, really. And he's always had a big role in my tennis. And so he's probably the, the biggest influence on my tennis. But in terms of like, proper I guess proper tennis coaches in a way I'd say I haven't worked with that many coaches to be honest but one that I really liked working with was Alan Jones I'm not sure if you know him yeah I know him yeah I actually watched him play main draw AO I reckon he played Ferrero even I could be wrong on that yeah I mean he's I mean I've known him since I was very young and he's always been around in Canberra okay so why is he why is he good What, what what things does he do that that makes you think of him in that in that way i mean he's always just given me the time of day and just put a lot of effort into me and gone out of his way to try and help me become a better player and he's i just have, have that feeling he's always been invested in my tennis and yeah i mean brighton as well he was my old coach but even till like he still messages me a fair bit and i mean we're still on good terms and he's he helped my tennis a lot as well and so i'd probably say those two and my dad probably have had yeah, and I mean, when I was younger in Canberra as well, I did a bit of work with Todd Larkin as well, and he was very good for my tennis. And yeah, so yeah, I mean, that whole crew in Canberra has helped me a lot. Awesome. Yeah. Um, for me, like since I was young, I've always had like three people around me. Plus, like obviously, like my parents and stuff. They've always just like seen, said what they've seen since I was young. Um, yeah, just like um, Clint, Heath, and John. Charlie, <laughs> Charlie knows them. I always, I, I, yeah, I speak, I speak to, I speak to them a fair bit, like, um, like even, um, I don't know, I just feel like it's the people that are there, like, trying to help you even when you're not, like, paying, like, paying them and stuff, do you know what I mean? Like, even after I went into the National Tennis Academy for uh, a couple of years, they were still messaging me, still talking to me, still seeing how I'm going and stuff, and, um, just like, just like out of, just out of, um, not, just because they want to see me do well, and I think that having like people like that around you is always um, it's always just good, you know, because they they genuinely just have the best your best interests, and um, I just, I just yeah, I think that definitely. Yeah, yeah, for sure. People that are that it's beyond the job job description, right? Yeah. That you feel like they're actually backing you, at, yeah. Like for no, no matter what, and if they if you leave them and you move on to another coach or something, you feel like that you, they're still in your corner. In, yeah. In a way, they want the best for you. Like some it sounds of them, like the trend. Some of them like they just call me up to like talk about like footy and stuff. Like they don't even like they can't, we might not even talk about tennis. It'll just be about anything, you know. Like cool. Yeah. I almost feel like you want a coach that almost cares if you win or not as much as you do like you, they're living it on the sideline and they're like you know when you lose they're like it hurts them a lot but then when you win you know they're they're up and about as well and it's like that's sort of what i and someone that you really want to play for and that motivates you and you feel like feel like you want to do well not just for yourself but for them as well yeah cool awesome um what's the best uh actually i'm gonna miss that one how do you think your friends or group influ- uh, how do you think your friends your friends group at your age influences you and your motivation and your tennis do you think it influences it much your friend group you, is in like just in general or? not like the not the not the people themselves but just how much do you think the environment you're around the people you hang out with affects your mentality I feel like it does a fair bit in a way because if you're always comparing how you're doing and just talking, oh, I'm doing better than you or you're doing better than me, and we do say that stuff, but it's it's just a joke around and just for a bit of fun. But when people are serious and trying to compare, it's it's a bit unhealthy, I find, and you should just be trying to get each other best. And when someone has a good result, feel happy for them and you know, not just jealousy because that's not going to get you anywhere and we're all on our different paths and we're all going to have you know, good results at times and others are going to have bad results and yeah, that's just how it's going to be. Yeah. 
Yeah, like, I feel like definitely, like, if you have, like, a negative environment around you and people are always telling you, don't do this, like, or just, like, negative kind of stuff or, yeah, he's really good or stuff like that or just they're just doing, like, the wrong things, you know, or just putting you down. I just feel like that's not good, even if you just have people just, like, good environment around you, just trying to keep things fun, enjoyable. Like, I feel like that's the biggest thing. Uh, it can just, um, it just makes it a lot easier, you know. Yeah. One thing I like about the coaches thing from the coaches question is I feel like a, a big thing for me that I didn't mention before about a coach is one that actually believes in you in a way and that believes that you can beat it or but believes that you can beat anyone and doesn't say like you know oh this guy's too good you're gonna lose today like just hope to get games and but actually genuinely believes inside of them that you can beat <laughs> yeah <laughs> Bigger well, forehand, yeah, well, bigger serve, bigger back end. Well, fir- <laughs> first thing is you gotta be- you gotta believe, brother. You know, and and I feel like that, speaking of that, Darwin Blanche, I feel like you found that you found a bit of belief this week, and it was good because I felt like as soon as that draw current came out, you're putting him on a pedestal a little bit. So oh it was yeah, good I mean, that you I played him that. earlier this year, and beforehand it was almost like as if I'd lost before even stepping on the court. Well, yeah. I had I was having a pretty sorry, average trip. Mom's, my mom's calling me. Sorry. That's all right. Go for it. Is she in Oz? Yeah, she is. She's yeah. meeting with a lady right now. Yeah, I don't know what she's doing. Okay, cool. But um, yeah, I sort of feel like I went into that match with just like, oh, I've already lost. Like I was having a pretty average European trip and I was just like, oh, this guy's God almost in a way. And the people around me didn't really give me the belief that I could actually beat him. And it sort of felt like everyone just thought, oh, tough, tough jaw, bad luck. Yeah. Let's move on to next week. You're going to lose. When I sort of felt, sort of felt this time actually... I know hard court helped me a bit, but I also I actually felt more belief, and the people around me made me believe that I could actually beat him. When last time I was just I had zero belief. Yeah, cool man. Because as I said to you the other day, you probably I think you probably played a six or seven out of ten, and you went four in the third. So that's a pretty good effort. Um, that you know, if you, you he's definitely not out of reach and. Uh, I feel like when you're, yeah, the, the worst thing you can do in any scenario is is tr- really try. This is what the one of the negative things about UTR as well is you really can get it in your head that somebody's a level above you and you shouldn't beat them. And I feel like, especially when you, you look back at when you're younger, uh, I feel like as you get older, people get more comfortable with their belief and be able to win up because uh, it, it. Look at as I was saying to you the other day. Look at all the occasions throughout tennis history where there've been massive upsets, you know, yeah. and. Um, there's a lot of variables, so yeah. Yeah. Don't don't put people on pedestals. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Uh. What advice? Um. What advice would you, Jonesy, if we had a little twelve-year-old Jonesy walk in the room here, <laughs> what, oh, no. what advice do you think you would give him? Um. I'd tell him to. Not change something that's working and stay around positive people. Not let yeah. people tell you that too too arrogant or too yeah. cocky or you're not doing this right, you're not doing that right. Yeah. And uh, my purpose for the question as well. Sorry to cut you off. Is yeah. also uh, it's also if I'm thinking about um, uh, if there is a parent watching and they have a, a good a 12 year old tennis player, you know, and you're just always trying to um, you know if you can teach teach backwards and pass pass lessons on. So. Yeah. Yeah, just like just not just listen to people that are like around you, the good good ones, you know, like that, and like maybe say not get too. Um, this might sound bad because I know lots of people say this, but um, like winning is important. Like lots of people say that it's a long process and trust the process, but I don't really like that saying. You know, like I kind of feel like you should you should trust the process and always try and get better but don't let people tell you that wins and losses don't matter because they do yeah that's what i'd say and yeah yeah and i'd say that do what you think's best deep down like you have to just do what you genuinely want to do not what other people want and you just have to because it's your career in the end and you just have to do what you think's going to do it and have no regrets and just go after it and grab it and give it your all really and just yeah just do what, I feel like the important one for me was just genuinely do what you th- what what you want to do and what you think's best for you. Yep, for sure. Yeah, there's going to be plenty of plenty of voices, you know, plenty of voices in your time, 
and uh, yeah, there's definitely there's no one way to do things. There's everyone's an individual, and yeah. everyone's got their own path and everything. So, good good words, man. Um, uh, what are your goals for the? Ne- do you guys set goals? And if so, what are your goals for the next twelve months? Uh, well, going backwards a bit, the start of this year, I sort of set the goal that because I was ranked like. 80 in the world in December last year and so I wasn't actually going to be in the slams well guaranteed but I set a goal that I wanted to play all four junior grand slams main draw this year or not lose first round which is sadly what happened but you know try and go as deep as possible in them and try and get a big result I wanted to finish this year top 20 in the world which is still I'm 36 right now so with another five or six tournaments I'm going to play between now and then it's definitely doable that's uh, and then I mean, I didn't really have any ATP ranking goals in a way because I don't play that many futures but or pro events in a way, but yeah. So the big one for me was I really wanted to try and play all four junior slams at the start of the year. And for the for the future, I mean, for next year's my last year in junior, so hopefully I'm not bloody hustling J, J300 in Charleroi. <laughs> but yeah, hopefully I'll be playing... Um, I'll just play the, the big tournaments, eight, ten big tournaments, and really try and get a big result there. That's my... I just want to, well, I'd love to win a junior slam, but <laughs> let's start with winning a first round first because I'm 0 from 5 so far in junior slam first round singles matches. Um, but, yeah, let's, let's try and win a junior slam, top 10 in the world, uh, even top 5, top 1, yep. who knows. But, yeah, and then try and build a pro ranking as well next yep. year because I'll be playing a lot more futures than I have been because I'll only play the major junior tournaments yeah so for anybody just on that front before jo- before Jonesy goes so if anyone watching if you uh, finish top 10 in the world you get um, X amount of how many 25k main draws do you get or you get if you finish 0 to 10 or 1 to 10 in the world you get 8, eight, uh, eight 75s 8 50 or 75k yeah. challenger main draw wild cards of your choice 10 to 20s 8 qualifying main draw or qualifying challenger wild cards of your choice and 20 to 30 is 8 20, uh, 25k future wild main draw wildies yeah, of your so choice a bit of in, that's a new pathway a bit of incentive which is sick incentive for you guys you know it's cool um, Jonesy um Goal, goals, looking goals. Ahead. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Um. Yeah. Goals. Um. I don't know. Well, what's in your mind, mate? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've just good. been waiting a while. <laughs> no, no, no. Um. Yeah. Goals. Um. My goal. Uh, my goals have changed a lot. <laughs> at yeah. the start of the year, it was to finish finish this year at top ten, but um. I had some scheduling issues and I played a lot of clay court tournaments that it wasn't it wasn't too good for my ranking. So now I'm I'm sitting around seventy. Yeah. So goals have kind of been yep. yeah, redeveloped. Goals, <laughs> goals so, get recalibrated. Yeah. But do, so, do you think do you think the playing clay uh, do you think playing clay factor? Obviously, you're never going to be a clay court specialist. The way your your game's really suited to hard court, and you, and you should yeah. be progressing your hard court aggressive game. To, but do you think there is it's going it might pay some dividends in the long run playing? Yeah, I reckon. Or? I reckon a fair. I reckon a fair few. Like um, I reckon I reckon definitely it would it help me um get a little bit better. It just yeah. Um, did affect my ranking a bit, but yeah. um, I'd probably say for my goals is just to get back, get back in the top forty by the end of the year. Um, yeah, just just to get back there, and by the end, and if I can do that and make main draw slams, and I feel like I want to try and make like quarters AO slam, quarters yep. AO juniors that coming up. Yeah. yeah, deep run, deep runs coming. Deep runs oh, coming. All that matters. Well, I've been saying, saying that. It. Yeah, it, I'll, say saying it it, I'll say it till it comes. I'll say it till it comes. Yeah. Keep saying it. Just train, train the subconscious. Yeah. Deep runs coming. Deep right. runs coming. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Uh, do you guys write down goals at all, or you just kind of loosely think of them at the start of the year? Or? Um. Nah. I'm not very good with that kind of side of the things. Yeah. I think sometimes uh, it's not always. Yeah. It's not but. really for me. I think Camus. Yeah. He's pretty good with this sort of stuff, though. I'm guessing. Do you write down any goals or do you be specific about them or you just you have it in your head roughly what you want to get to? A bit of both. and I, I'm sure Jonesy and Pav and, yeah, when they when they room with me, they, don't, they know I don't mind my motivational videos and my Instagram, TikTok and social media feeds are a lot of David Goggins and, uh, yeah, all, all the motivational stuff. Yep. I am looking forward to a little bit more activity on that old Insta of yours, mate. 
Uh, my rule yeah. is you have to have to win win a tournament to get a post up there. In a tournament, you get a post up. Yeah. Um, do you use it for anything else or just other applications? <laughs> uh, okay, I'll leave you with that one. Um, uh, what do you think you have to do to with your games specifically to get to your goals in twelve months' time? Where do you think you have to improve? I mean, to be honest, at the after my pretty rough European trip, I came back thinking, uh, yeah, my tennis has gone a bit downhill. Uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure really. Uh, I'm not sure what. Uh, oh, there's a lot to improve on. But then, I also feel like a big thing was it was I had a massive lack of confidence. I didn't have any self belief. I didn't think I was at the level really, which was sort of driven in by the people around me. But we won't get into that. And. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, you go. But yeah, I, I went and played the, the J two hundred in Sydney, which was, in hindsight, an unbelievable decision. Won the first week, final the second week, won a heap of matches. You know, came over, came over to the states, uh, final the final my first J three hundred. Even though, I mean, I played some good matches, but then I did get a bit lucky in the semis. But you know, that's I'll take it. And then yeah. I came over here with a lot more confidence than I'd gone into gone into any other. I'm hit lucky, buddy. You weren't that lucky. It was, it was hard work in the semi, mate. Yeah, no. <laughs> he'd, he'd looked at my, my, my win-loss ratio in the last few weeks he and he ran. was intimidated. He yeah. But, um, but, yeah, I came, you know, my confidence has gotten, gotten a lot higher over the last month or so and that comes just from winning matches, which goes back to my thing before about, you know, play what you want to play and do what you want to do because I feel like if you do that, you're going to have no regrets and yeah. that's what I sort of, I really wanted to play those J2s because I... I could probably count on two hands how many matches I'd I'd won before then this year in in, in big tournaments. So, yeah. um, there's also a factor of in terms of that. So, um, like my my parents weren't as into my tennis as as your parents are. Not that they're unbelievably supportive, but uh, I think just learning about scheduling and what tournaments to play and and things like that. Uh, I was I probably could have actually used this a little bit with with more voices in my head to understand that. So there is there is two sides to that coin, but I fully get what you what you guys are saying. Um, sure. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, Jonesy, what do you think you have to do? Uh, what do you think you have to do with your game to take it to the next level, whatever that next level is? If it's winning, let's say it's winning junior slams. Um, for me, it's just like uh, there's a couple of there's a couple of things. Uh, definitely getting a bit faster. Um, just a bit more agile. Um, put a bit more weight on so I can get behind the ball a bit more um i recently changed my forehand a bit to um be a bit bigger so i just gotta keep working at that and but just um, going for it a bit more i just kind of bought my grip around a bit so i can have more variety on it and yeah. swing faster at it and it's actually been getting better um, yeah. yeah second serves i've been costing me a fair bit i've hit a couple of doubles yeah to be fair as well i know you've been struggling with that a little yeah. bit but I've, since last time I saw you play, man, you got a fair few more Ks on your first serve. Yeah. So that's a good thing. You definitely nice. can hit a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and just definitely mentally, I say, I gotta keep my cool a bit more. You know. Um, I've been I've been working at it for like, I don't know, a long, long time. But it's um, I don't know. You always slip up, and sometimes when you slip up, it can cost you matches and cost you like in important moments. And uh, yeah. Just getting better at that stuff. Just, just I guess being able to let go and not react um so yeah cool yeah. okay so boys if there was one grand slam you could win which grand slam would you win um the french no i'm, I'm just kidding that's probably my <laughs> least favorite um wimbledon for sure Wimby. Or, yeah, yeah wimbledon yeah definitely 100 percent. you i mean i take any of them to be completely honest but um I've always said that if you win Roland Garros, it means you're playing some bloody good tennis. Cause that's a, the toughest slam to win, in my opinion. Not, I'm not saying it's my favourite, but I reckon it's the hardest one to win because it's on the toughest surface. And yeah, but in terms of favourite, just I don't really if you could, if I could say, okay, Charlie, you're going to win guaranteed one Grand Slam. Which slam do you want to win? I gotta say Wimbledon for the prestige. Wow, boys, I'm taking AO. Really? <laughs> I'm taking AO. Home slam. I'm taking it. I'm not, I don't know. I feel like. Other motivations to win Wimbledon. Okay, cool. No, I like it. <laughs> uh, I feel like 
Wimbledon is the holy grail of tennis. Because like, the wifey's from there. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Wimbledon's, <laughs> Wimbledon's the holy grail of tennis. I f- well, like I said, Roland Garros, in my opinion, is the hardest one to win. Winning it on Arthur Ashe Stadium in front of 25,000 people would be incredible. Yeah, what was it and like looking at that? Um, so Charlie and, I, uh, Charlie and I got to go into um, the Octagon suite yesterday and have a look at Arthur Ashe, and it was pretty crazy. Eh? What was it like for you having a look in there? I mean, my biggest takeaway was that uh, Carlos Alcaraz is on a different planet, but... Um, yeah, uh, that's for sure. Uh, but yeah, well, I mean, it was incredible. I've never seen a tennis court with that many... With the, yeah, such a big stadium around it. Yeah, yeah, wild. That's, yeah. Okay, so Wimby, Wimby. All right, fair enough. Okay, if I had a contract here right now with David Ferrer's career achievements on it, can we list and, them? And you could say uh, it is final French, um, world number three career high, uh, long time in top four, longer time in top eight. Um, Masters, Paris. Did yeah. he win Paris once? Oh. I reckon he won Paris once. But uh, yeah, um, but no Grand Slam, no top two in the world. Would you sign? I mean, it is a pretty it's incredible a pretty career, career in right. terms of when you put it into perspective, but I'd rather, than, I mean, I want to do more than that. I would, I mean, if I retire and that's that, then that's a bloody good career. But <laughs> I mean, with where I'm at right now, I don't even, it's a tough question because that is a very good career. But then again, does David Ferrer go down in the history books like Pav always says? <laughs> <laughs> depends how long into the future you ask and depends on history history books but he definitely had an epic career he's in one of the toughest uh phases of tennis yeah for me pav and jonesy i think we've all come to the agreement then unless unless you have rafa's career novak's career um federer's career maybe murray's career if you're lucky or alcaraz then uh yeah you're a nobody you're not you're not signing <laughs> okay <laughs> Um, am I? Um, no, I'm not. <laughs> no, no, nah, nah, I'm not. I don't know why. I just cool. I'm that's I'm yeah. stuck to hear. You're rolling the dice, backing yourself. Yeah, I just prefer to try and win one. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I like it. Um. Okay. AO twenty twenty three. You get a wild card. Hypothetically, twenty four. Sorry, you get a wild card. Would you rather play Novak on Rod Laver Arena first round or play? Juan Manuel Serendulo, clay dog on court, show court three. Novak, 100%. 100% Novak. That'd be, I reckon that'd be awesome because, nah, take him down. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, nah, just even if he, even if he like gave you the scissors, you still get to play on um, Rod Labor Arena. Yeah. I'm sure it'd be pretty full watching Novak, some 17 year old Australian there. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I saw one of my one of the guys that I played with last year just played Tiafo and Arthur Ashe and Huh? No, I'm talking about Lerner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah and Jakob Mensik and they play they played on Arthur Ashe and they got they they both got diced but it seemed like a pretty cool experience. Yeah. I mean, I guess it depends how how much I'm backing myself and how good I think I am and how big my head is in a way because if I'm thinking about I want to do well and win rounds, then I'm probably taking Sarandolo on court, yeah. on the outside court. But then again, he's still a bloody good player, so it's not, it ain't going to be no walk in the park, that's for sure. So, if, I mean, playing Novak would be an ex- on on Rod would be an experience you never forget, probably. So, I mean, probably this year playing Novak on on Rod because still to win a round against the top hundred players. Uh, yeah, so it take is, the experience factor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's probably would be a, almost a miracle. Yeah, but yeah, so probably go back on the rod. Cool, sounds good. Um, just touch. I was going to ask you this question if we were doing this one on one, but just touch on uh, what it's been like. You had a few Orange Boy experiences at Davis Cup, and uh, it. <laughs> uh, what, what, what's it been like having those experiences? How valuable has it been? What things have you learned? I mean, all you need to know is that I'm going again tomorrow night to Manchester with Orange Boys. That probably tells you everything you need to know. (laughs) But, um, 
Yeah, I mean, that'll be my fourth time. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I quite enjoy it. I've been around those boys, supporting them and getting to hit with them. And, yeah, I mean, I, I really enjoy it. And, you know, try and so be a uh, sort of act, act as a sponge and soak up all the all the wisdom that they have to give out. Yep. Cool. I enjoyed it too. It was um it was it was it was a cool experience. Like it, it's good um um <laughs> Yeah, no, it was good. It was good. Like um Have you actually done it? Yeah, I did it once. Oh, true, I did it with I him. Know, yeah. yeah, I did it with him. Um Oh, cool. Yeah, it was it was cool to get to know like the players and stuff. Like they're all pretty funny. Um yeah. found I found like thought thought Max and um Cock were pretty pretty funny that it was yeah. good to um yeah like just being around getting to know like Leighton and uh Luch and like some of the ex-Australian players that like obviously very famous um like, it's just good to be around them and see see what their take on tennis is and stuff it's it's pretty it, it's it's definitely um it's definitely a good experience cool cool uh, uh second last question I reckon what would you do if you were no longer allowed to play tennis oh to England, um, <laughs> I'd I'd probably just I don't really know. Uh, I'd probably just take up a hobby. Like, do I have depends. Like, do I have to like work? Uh, yeah. Just or just what? Okay. what I'd probably just take go pretty. In? I'd I'd probably try and play like AFL or something just for a bit. Yeah. So if, you'd stay, try and if play it sport. wasn't really anything to do with sport, like I'd just I'd probably just get something. I'd probably just live like live on the beach and just surf and stuff and just live out. Yeah. Just, just live there. Build pools. I mean, yeah. Build pools. Callum reckons I'm going to be changing my tune on this one in a few years' time, but I do not want to be a tennis coach. I have zero interest in uh, being a tennis coach. Look <laughs> out, Charlie Camus, 2041. <laughs> He's going to be the best tennis coach around. <laughs> oh, mate, you're next in line for the house, bro. <laughs> but, um... <laughs> Probably try and stay in, stay in some sort of sporting environment or do something to do with yeah one of my other favourite sports, rugby league, soccer. Or um, But if I want to do something outside of sport, uh, I better get my act together with school because otherwise I won't have many options. <laughs> no plan B, brother. Just go maybe, <laughs> maybe I'd like to go into umpiring. Like, I think I think I might, like, enjoy that a little bit, you know. Just, just, um... Yeah. I don't know, just a local, just be a local ref, just help out, I don't know. Yeah, true, I could I feel like I'd be that, man. I feel like I'd be able to deal with it better than some refs, like, I don't know. Just. <laughs> Pav, Pav, Pav's always told me, because we always have the conversations about how important and how, how seriously we should be taking our education, and Pav's always, Pav opened my eyes once when he said this, and I was actually, when I thought about it, I was like, <laughs> and I'll never, probably never forget, never forget this quote from the, uh, Pavle, but he goes he goes the normal kids that go to school do they play tennis in case school fails no so why should we do well, why should we go to school in case tennis fails yep i guess because school i guess because school is teaches you as i'm not a massive fan of the education system but school does teach you a lot of general skills you learn how to socialize you learn how to read and write and even traveling around the world as a tennis player Doing all the, all the little bits of admin you got to do, like there's so much just boring stuff that it's good if you can be have some uh, somewhat of a head on you and know how to um, just run your life and you know organize all your stuff. And you guys aren't dummies by any stretch. You, you guys are all smart, but um, yeah, yeah, <laughs> in different ways, mate. Yeah. I definitely wasn't book smart. I was yeah. I was tanking school pretty hard, uh, but uh, um, not that. Yeah, uh, in yeah, put put your eggs in the tennis basket and keep training hard. Let's go. <laughs> um, okay, uh, last question, boys. Um, um, what? Uh, who's the last bird you've been Snapchatting? Oh, <laughs> Jonesy. <laughs> no, you're nah, going first. You're going first. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> so, I, I'm, you don't actually have to answer. I don't want to put you on the spot. I was just joking. I was just joking. You don't have to actually answer. But we did have a little uh, deal at the start of the week that, what was the deal? That whoever went the furthest at uh, US Open Juniors, we don't have Pav here, but out of Pavle, Jonesy and Charlie, the two that didn't go the furthest had to 
ask a girl out on a date. And I haven't really seen much movement on that front, boys. So we're going for you're leaving tomorrow night. I reckon a 6 p.m. ice cream uh, Times Square. Oh my God! It was uh, to clarify. Pav gets to choose a girl for each of us, so it's not our choice. But uh, yeah, <laughs> no thanks. Don't dig yourself in a hole, mate. You can do that. You don't have to answer. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. Look, I don't know what to say here, but I mean. It's all good. It's all good. Well, I'm sure. I'm sure we'll get it done. I mean, we got one more. Yeah, we got one more day. Nah, it's all good. It's good to have a bit of banter, boys. Um, to, uh, thanks heaps for. for uh, I got a question. I got a question. Okay, hit me. What's something? What's something you learned about each of us that you didn't like? Um, like that you didn't um, expect or okay. something that was. Uh, it is interesting. Okay, that's something you didn't um, like expect. Pablo, I felt like he's a lot more of a softy and he's a lot got a warmer heart than I thought he can come across I thought he was a little I thought he was ha- like tougher to approach yeah thought he was obviously he's got a different on court demeanor to what he's like off court and um, he's got a quite a strut on him and uh, he's, <laughs> I, I, I like him not that I didn't not that I didn't like him at all I just I didn't know him but I, I get along with him a lot more than I thought I was going to and he's a lot more he's a lot warmer and a lot more of a softy than I realized um and uh okay you jonesy what um uh you <laughs> you're actually less you're less arrogant than i thought i thought you were t- i thought this is just my own judgment okay I that's fine I, i'm fine with it, it doesn't bother you, me. yeah i i i thought you had a and and don't get me wrong like it's a bit uh it's so it's just so easy to come across that way accidentally yeah, yeah. and you're co- fine, and yeah. you're confident and that's good but i thought you were um had a tiny bit of arrogance about you but you uh, but uh that you don't and you're just a um you're you're a, yeah you're a um, bigger legend than i thought uh, to be honest so <laughs> yeah. yeah um uh also pa- on the yeah pavle pavle is a um you all want it uh, you're all sm- you're all more self motivated. I knew you were motivated, self motivated, but I, you and Pablo are more <laughs> motivated than I thought as well. I didn't know you yeah. guys w- that well. You yeah. Know? yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, oh, this is, it's Char- just interesting to see like Charlie, what can come um, across as. I think uh, he's better with the girls than you thought. He's uh, he's uh, he's got extremely good. M- <laughs> I didn't realize the amount of miles in the thumbs he has. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't know he was. Um, yeah, he was a big pen pal. Uh, <laughs> but uh, also, um, off court game needs a lot of work. <laughs> yeah, you were. Um, I don't know, man. I probably you were pretty similar to what I thought in a sense. I probably. I don't know if I. Maybe I knew you a little bit better than the other boys. Uh, if anything, you got a. No, I know. You're definitely more cheeky than I thought, off court. You definitely get a bit more chirp than I realised, <laughs> I reckon. And uh, um, not really to me, but just in general observing, especially around the boys. But, it's, uh, it's kind of funny like how people can like judge you from like being on court. You're just a completely different person like off court, eh? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Some people are just so yeah. opposite. Like, it's... Uh, yeah, I mean, Pub's a great example. You have some people that are so chill and they can just be ragers on court all yeah. day. Or the or the opposite, they're um they're super calm on court, like like Max Purcell, man. Yeah. He's okay. So not that he's calm or he's like he's um. Yeah. Max is unbelievably and Max um, uh, is one of my good mates and he's a, he's a legend and I'm so stoked to see him doing well. But it's and he's he's so good at managing his matches, managing his emotions and um and 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 being present, and uh, he's not a comp- uh. He he doesn't let things get to him at all on yeah. court, but off court, so many things piss him off, <laughs> <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, um, but boys, uh, unless you got anything else to say, I've uh, thoroughly enjoyed chatting with you. Um, it's been sick hanging out with all three of you, and it's been cool, like just being part of the crew and getting to know you all. And um, uh, yeah, if there's any. Ad- a small amount of advice I could pass on to you. It's that time, and this is just so cliche, but um, I just have to express it because it feels true. It's uh, time does pass really quickly, and I can remember being your age. I can remember my thought process, what my head is like, and um, just in just think about think clearly about what you want, and and be willing to um, yeah 
uh, work hard for that and enjoy each day in the process because the tennis career seems like an eternity at your age. Um, but it, it, uh, when you're on the other side of it, like me, it's like, wow, I could be spending the next 70 years of my life not a tennis player, you know. So really embrace it and um, and know what you want and don't let uh, don't let uh, yeah other people um, get in the way of that. R- try and be aware of what... Um, when you're getting distracted and uh, what you need to do and um, uh, and stay humble. Stay humble and, yeah. Cheers, boys. All right. Thanks. Thanks, Cheers. brother. Diggers. Thanks, Cal. Cheers. Legends. All right.